Building smarter, not harder. Discover modular design for seamless optimization. This video is part of our Unreal Engine full course. Subscribe and check the playlist for more tutorials. In this lesson, we'll use modular design to build a detailed scene. We'll explore the Quixel Megascan library to learn how to create larger structures using modular pieces. By the end, you'll be able to efficiently use Nanite assets and modular design to create detailed environments. Let's get started. I have already gone to Quixel Megascan library so I can find an example to discuss modular design. If I go to the Environment Urban collection and look at the renders, I'll see references showing large environments and buildings built with modular pieces. Instead of 3D modeling or scanning a whole building, they use parts of a building and copy and paste them to build a larger one. This technique is effective for creating any environment, including games or cinematics. Imagine if you wanted to scan a building with a high level of detail and texture. The texture would have to be reduced because you couldn't capture that much detail in one scan. But now, since they only need to scan portions of a building, the quality and resolution of the objects and materials are much better. As you can see in these references or renders, they already have some modular designs we can use inside Unreal Engine. I have already decided on this and downloaded a lot of assets that I need. I have a list of assets I will provide you so you can follow along. Copy and paste the asset ID here and add it to your favorites to download. I have already tested these assets, so if you want to follow along, just download all of them. I'm copying and pasting the asset IDs here to find them immediately and add them to my favorites so I can add them all in one go. If I go to the favorite, you will see what I have collected and what I need to build my buildings. Since I have already downloaded them with Nanite quality, I can add them to my project. When I export them, they will be added to my project as Nanite assets. Now, in my content browser, I see that I have downloaded many assets to work with, each containing many items. I can drag and drop them one by one into the scene, but it's not a good practice. Instead, I will filter out all the static meshes in this folder. Now, it shows me all the static meshes in the folder. You can also apply filters to insulate any other kind of actors. For example, the static meshes are filtered here. And I can select everything I need from them. I can drag and drop everything I need into my scene. First, right click to create a folder in the outliner to keep it clean. I'll call it modular design. Now let's hide other things and focus on our objects. If you want to select all items inside a folder, you can open it and select them all. Or right click and select select all dependents. Press F to focus on all the items in the folders. To clean things up, I'll spread them out to see what's inside the folder. Since I have built this scene once, I know I don't need some of these items. I have all my pieces together and everything is in the same row. I will turn on the blocking now and note that four pieces of modular buildings can cover my building. It will be good enough for me. I'll move things around to build four rows of these. As I go through these steps, I decide where to place each item. Let me put a bookmark here so I can return whenever I want. Now that I have spread everything out, if I compare it with my blocking, I think it will cover the building nicely. Now it is the time to talk about some engine modifications. At the top it says, texture streaming pool size over the amount. What does this mean? In Unreal Engine, texture streaming pool size over the amount means that the memory allocated for loading textures is full. This happens when there are too many high resolution textures, causing performance issues. You may need to increase the texture streaming pool size to fix this. If I come to the command line here and type rstreaming.poolsize, hit enter and click on the output log, you will see 1000, which is the current size of our pool. But apparently it's not enough. And now we are much over it. When the texture streaming pool size is not enough, we usually get low resolution textures. So. If you see your textures don't seem right in the scene and viewport, it might be one of the problems. So if I want to increase it, I can just copy this and put 2000. When I enter, you see that the node from the top disappears because right now, if I type R streaming, pool size, again, 
the new streaming pool size is 2000. However, any settings changed in Unreal Engine from the command line will only be temporary. If the engine is closed and reopened, it will revert to the default settings. In our case, if I save our changes, restart the engine, and go to my working level. Please note that you do not see your levels or other items in your content folder. Remember that we put this static mesh filter here, so we must deactivate it to see all items in the folder and open our level. If I type rstreaming.poolsize and hit enter in the output log again, we have 1000. Everything you put in the command line is adjusted for that session only. If you want this change to be permanent, bring it to your engine configuration. So, let's copy this, close the engine, and in the configuration section, open the default engine.ini file. You see many settings here. You can set it again by just typing rstreaming.poolsize equal in one of the lines, but this time with 2000 or maybe 3000 to solve our texture streaming pool size. However, it's good practice to increase it gradually, so don't jump to a very high number. As we go, you can save this and restart your engine again. Now, if I go to my level, go to the command line and type rstreaming.poolsize, you will see that it is 3000. So, if you see that message and notice that many textures in your scene are not shown correctly, gradually increase the streaming pool size. If your computer lacks high specifications, such as a powerful graphics card and CPU, which can cause problems with your project while you are working on it, you can adjust the project's quality to ensure smooth operation. You can adjust the settings in engine scalability. For example, if you lower the quality, textures are shown worse, and as you go lower, the quality decreases further. You will see an immediate boost in frames per second as you lower the quality. Epic is the default setting. From the Epic default setting, if we go to a higher setting like Cinematic, we see an increase in quality. However, keep it on Epic or lower while working and switch to higher settings for final results if you are making a cinematic experience, but most of the time default settings should be fine. I brought these two cubes to explain a simple, very important method for modular design. If I select any actor, I can move it according to the gizmo. However, what if I want to change the location of the gizmo? I can hold the middle mouse button while holding it over the gizmo and drag it anywhere. Then, I can move the object from the new gizmo location. However, the gizmo returns to its original place if I deselect the object. To solve this one way, is to right-click and set the pivot point as an offset. So if I deselect and reselect the object, the gizmo stays in the same place. If I want to snap the pivot point to a corner, I hold Alt plus V while moving the pivot point while holding the middle mouse button and snap it to some vertices on the object. As you may remember from our explanation about a 3D object, vertex in a 3D object is a point where edges in a mesh connect forming the surfaces of the model, like the corners of a cube. So I set it as a pivot offset in vertex which is in one of the corners for better control. It stays there. Now, I can move this object from this corner. If I want to put this in the corner of another object, I hold V on the keyboard while I try to move it, which causes it to snap to any vertices in the scene. I can easily make a copy by holding Alt on the keyboard, moving around the cube and starting to build. I can snap it by holding V and moving the cube with the gizmo around. This is the fundamental technique for assembling modular pieces. Let's delete them for now and return to our view. I will use the same technique to build this building. First, I'll start here and make a copy. As I selected this, I noticed that the gizmo was not in the right place. So, I hold Alt and V to position the gizmo correctly and set it. When selected, I can move the object close to the other one. See how it fits nicely here. I will keep doing this for different pieces as well. If there is a small mistake, I can just eyeball it. Once selected, I can copy both and change the gizmo for both.
I'll put the gizmo in the right place, snap it here, and then do the same for the others. Since we don't have good vertices here, honestly, I think eyeballing it is kind of okay. Yeah, so we have this corner. I can either rotate it or scale it to a negative degree. For example, around minus one, it will scale nicely for us. Then I just put it here. I think I need to make a little bit of adjustments here. So, I think our object is mostly done and I have to make the backside of it. If I go to the top view, I can select and copy the selection Rotate it 90 degrees and put it here. If I go into perspective mode, you will see that it will sit nicely. This is a slight modification. Also, I want to put a bookmark here to return to this many times. If I come here and change the direction of the light, you see some weird shadows here. As I said, the backside of this will not cast a shadow, so we have to put a ceiling on top of this. So, I went here and brought the sun back to where it was. As you can see, we don't have a roof for this building. I want to build a roof for this so that it will get the correct shadows. I'm going to use a cube. I will bring a cube to my scene to make a roof. If I go to the lit mode and nanite optimization and mask, you see that my cube is not a nanite object. So, I want to turn the cube into a nanite object before I use it as a roof for my building. Let's go back to lit mode. If I select the cube and go to detail, then I can find where it's located inside my engine on static mesh. As you see, it is located somewhere inside the engine content. So I can simply right click and activate Nanite for this object. However, since this cube is an engine asset, I don't want to modify it. Instead of using this one, I will make a duplicate and call this duplicate Nanite cube. I'm going to use this cube instead. I'm going to move this cube to another folder, my content folder. Inside the content folder, I'm going to create another folder called Meshes. I'm going to bring the cube here. Instead of using that cube, I'm going to use this cube. And I can activate Nanite for this cube here. I'm going to delete the other one and use this one. If I go and check it, you see that it is a Nanite object. I'm going to one of the orthographic views, like the top view, and using this cube to make a ceiling just by scaling it. I'm going to perspective view and moving this cube up over here. As you see, this cube has no material, so I will find material for it inside the Kixel Megascan library. I already decided on this material and I think it is suitable for my roof. The high quality is good enough, so I will download it and add it to my project. I can drag and drop it to my object when I'm back inside the viewport. I can also change the tiling for the roof to something around this and even make it a little bit brighter to match the rest of the building. Now that we have a roof, let's talk about the windows. I brought two wood planks to cover up my windows. I won't cover glass material in this training because it is a complicated material I will cover in other courses. Let's cover our windows with these planks. So I simply moved this to cover my openings. It's just a matter of moving things around. I'm considering covering these diagonally as if someone is covering an abandoned building. Even making multiple copies, it's just a matter of copying and pasting to cover this window. I will also cover other windows, but it makes sense to cover them from inside instead of outside. My building is ready. I just have to make some minor adjustments to some parts. We've covered a lot in this lesson, including an introduction to modular design. Remember, 
Modular design is a powerful technique that allows you to create complex and detailed environments efficiently. In the next lesson, we will discuss organizational techniques like grouping, creating packed level actors, and parenting.